everything inside me. Following the Biden administration's recent climate-related executive orders, the same administration is now looking at taking climate action a step further. The recent orders include a pause on new oil and gas leases on federal property, alignment of financial flows with the objectives of the Paris Agreement, and setting a new target for reducing U.S. greenhouse gas emissions by 2030. But you won't believe where that money is coming from. According to new reports, the White House is looking to take advantage of a new funding source from the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Commodity Credit Corporation, or CCC. During his Senate confirmation hearing, Tom Vilsack said the CCC funds could be used to create a market to trade carbon or help farmers adopt sustainable agriculture practices. Vilsack said these programs could then be expanded and included in future farm bills. It is a great tool for us to create the kind of structure that will inform future farm bills about what will encourage carbon sequestration, what will encourage precision agriculture, what will encourage soil health and regenerative agricultural practices," said Tom Vilsack, Biden's nominee for USDA chief at his Senate confirmation hearing. There is little doubt that this administration, like others before, will do anything that puts small farmers ahead of major big ag corporations. As Reuters.com reports, a handful of private projects launched recently by the likes of Cargill and Bayer have tried to compensate growers for sustainable agriculture practices. Many farmers, however, have been reluctant to make the shift due to high upfront costs for uncertain or minimal returns. The fact that Cargill and Bayer have been promoting these projects, with uncertain or minimal returns, should hint as to what form of sustainability we are looking at here. Biden's new USDA chief is also a significant clue as to what we are looking at for the future of the administration's agricultural policy. Tom Vilsack, after all, is a product of Big Ag. As GreenMatters.com author, Sophie Hirsch, writes, while serving as Obama's agriculture secretary, Vilsack made a few controversial moves regarding genetically modified crops, for instance, he expedited the approval process for GMOs, he helped create a GMO labeling bill, meant to replace Vermont's stricter standards, and he did away with regulations on big agriculture to appease the industry, as explained by In These Times. The outlet added that these decisions caused his critics to nickname him Mr. Monsanto, referring to Bayer's Monsanto, the company responsible for inventing the glyphosate-based herbicide Roundup. Vilsack's record in regards to animal agriculture is also a bit worrisome. For instance, in 2014, Vilsack and the USDA proposed removing some of the Food Safety Inspection Service inspectors from poultry slaughterhouses, who are responsible for examining slaughtered chicken for defects. Vilsack also has concerning ties with the dairy industry. After leaving the White House in early 2017, he promptly accepted a position as president and CEO of the U.S. Dairy Export Council, or U.S. DEC, which he still holds, but would presumably step down from, should his nomination as Secretary of Agriculture be approved. In his role at the U.S. DEC, Vilsack works with major dairy associations to help increase sales and consumer trust. Therefore, his inextricable ties to the dairy industry could be seen as a conflict of interest. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. It seems safe to say that the new sustainable practices promoted by the Biden administration are not going to focus on non-GMO traditional or organic agriculture, nor will these practices be to prevent over-farming. Instead, the expansion, centralization, and domination of big ag corporations over the United States food supply will be expanded. The farmers, consumers, and the environment will all suffer.
where would you prefer the $30 billion CCC fund to be allocated? Do you think this will encourage healthy environmental practices? Or is it all crony corporatism? Share your thoughts in the comments. For Biden, climate change is a chance to wield his executive power to your detriment. For green businesses climate change is the way to redirect massive amounts of taxpayer money into their pockets. For John Kerry, climate change is a way to re-emphasize just how special he is. And for you? Well, for you, climate change is about suffering. According to David Ismay, Under Secretary for Climate Change to Massachusetts Governor Charlie Baker, the government needs to break your will. Now that Biden's been in the White House for two and a half weeks, it's clear that the war against nature's natural climate cycles will be waged with all the vigor that President Trump brought to improving the economy, securing the border, increasing national security, and bringing peace to the Middle East. On his very first day, with the wavering stroke of his pen, Biden killed fracking on federal lands and the Keystone Pipeline, instantly destroying up to 70,000 highly skilled well-paying jobs. You've also probably seen the effects in increased fuel prices, which always fall hardest on those who can least afford them. Wave goodbye to the lovely low fuel prices of the Trump era, which made everything cheaper, from commutes, to food, to all other products. At the same time, Biden gave a huge bendoggle gift to the big car companies. On his sixth day in office, he announced that he intends to replace all 645,000 federal vehicles with electric cars. This is because federal vehicles are clean energy. Or are they? As Kristen Zimmerman, the former GM manager, shows, there's nothing clean about electric cars, because that electricity must come from somewhere. It's worse than that, though. Making electric car batteries is a dirty business. Every electric vehicle, and most hybrid vehicles, rely on large lithium-ion batteries weighing hundreds of pounds. One of the largest, the battery for the Mercedes-Benz EC, comes in at 1,400 pounds. Typically made with cobalt, nickel, and manganese, among other components, these batteries cost thousands of dollars, and come with an environmental burden. They require ingredients sourced from polluting mines and smelters around the world, and they can ultimately contaminate soil and water supplies if improperly disposed. Moreover, the same article points out that these batteries aren't recyclable. They're mostly just garbage. But that doesn't matter to the big virtue signalers, people like John Kerry. He recently flew on his private jet to Iceland to pick up an award for his work on the climate. When a single reporter asked him about that flight, and private jets, per person, are filthy flyers, Kerry explained that he's special. If you offset your carbon, it's the only choice for somebody like me who is traveling the world to win this battle," Kerry said in an interview with local outlet Rav, unearthed by Fox News on Wednesday. According to Kerry, the good he does for climate, far outweighs his climate sins. The same is not true for the little guy. David Ismay, who is Massachusetts Governor Baker's undersecretary for climate change, told a little secret to Vermont climate activists. Having finished attacking corporate America, it's now time for the government to break the will of and turn the screws on ordinary people, such as the person across the street or the senior on the fixed income. So let me say that again, 60% of our emissions that need to be reduced come from you, the person across the street, the senior on fixed income, right? There is no bad guy left, at least in Massachusetts to point the finger at, to turn the screws on, and you know, to break their will, so they stop emitting. That's you. We have to break your will. Right, I can't even say that publicly. Vulnerable people die from temperature extremes. They starve when they cannot afford to get to stores or buy food. The extra costs from expensive energy, which mean nothing to someone sucking on the government teat or flying on a private jet, have a different impact on the poor, a concept that encompasses children, the elderly, and racial minorities. For them, increased fuel prices are the difference between life and death, poverty and security, a good future for their children, or generations of despair. This is what they want you for in their quixotic and futile quest to change the cycles of the sun and the earth. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. 
apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This Everything Inside Me channel, see you on the next video.